Today's lecture is on symbiosis. Symbiosis is a situation where two organisms actually form a relationship with each other. So previously we studied that an animal will occupy a niche in a habitat and we talked about the competitive exclusion principle where two organisms cannot occupy the same niche in the same habitat for very long. So symbiosis is a situation where we actually will have two organisms that sort of do occupy the same habitat and niche. Not exactly, but they form a working relationship with each other. Now it doesn't have to be two animals, by the way. Uh, it could be two plants, could be an animal and a plant, could be a fungus and a protista. You can come up with all sorts of arrangements here. But we're basically talking about a relationship that two of them will have with each other. Okay, so within symbiosis, there's three different ways that it could happen. Here's the first way. Okay, the first way is mutualism. Now, mutualism is a symbiotic relationship where both organisms win. They both gain by having a relationship together. So it's win-win. An example would be a clownfish. So this little guy over here, these are the clownfish. And as you can see, I have a clownfish in my tank off to the side in the room. And uh, clownfish just love to live and uh, sleep in sea anemones. Now, a sea anemone is not a plant. It's also an animal, remember. So what do they each get from it? Well, it turns out that the sea anemone actually has tentacles which can sting and hurt other fish. So it protects the clownfish. And the clownfish actually has an immunity uh, to those tentacles so it doesn't get hurt, which is very interesting. And what does the uh, uh, sea anemone get out of the relationship. Well, a sea anemone uh, has a lot of trouble getting food since it can't move around all that much. The clownfish will actually bring it food. So it brings it food and it gets protection in return. A second type of symbiotic relationship is commensalism. Commensalism is a situation where one organism wins and the other well, it doesn't lose or win. It really just doesn't care. It's kind of like neutral. So a really good example of this would be a large whale. Now, if you've ever looked at the old movies, you see whales are just covered. They're just like ships covered with barnacles, right? And the barnacles attach themselves to the whales, and they use them for transportation and for food. And you would think the whale would really be bothered by this, but it's so big it just doesn't care at all. So uh, the barnacles win. The whale really doesn't care. That would be an example of commensalism. And the last possibility is probably the one you've heard the most about, which is uh, parasitism. In parasitism, you have one organism which wins and the other really loses. So here's an example, actually. I thought I'd switch it around and give you an example that had two plants, just so you realize it's not always uh, animal and animal. In this case, you have this little vine. I don't know if you can see this little light green vine, which is wrapping itself around. That's the daughter vine. And it's growing on this long stalk of a tomato plant. The reason it's wrapping itself around, just like a uh, boa constrictor would do it, it's, it's squeezing all the nutrients out of the tomato plant. And eventually, uh, it will kill the tomato plant. And the tomato plant is really losing from this relationship. Now, of course, the classic example of a parasite would it would it be not killing off uh, the host organism it'd want to keep that host organism as live as long as possible so it's not like it's eating just because I eat food doesn't make me a parasite parasite wants to keep the host alive as long as possible okay the really interesting thing here about these sort of relationships when you talk about mutualism is that the two organisms over time kind of adapt themselves so they can get into this sort of mutualistic uh, relationship. And we would call that mutual co-evolution. The two are changing so that they can adjust to each other. Over time, they form a stronger relationship. So here's another really good example. Now here's an example of an animal and a plant. In this case, the animal is the hummingbird here. And the hummingbirds are attracted by the scent and color of certain flowers. Uh, like most animals, they can't see a whole bunch. Hummingbirds only kind of see reds and purples. And so these flowers bloom uh, 
during the time when the hummingbirds also breed. So they're perfectly timed so that there will be lots of hummingbirds who will then take their flowers, spread their pollen, and so forth. And the color, of course, has been adjusted so only the hummingbirds can really see it well.